Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to talk about a middle how to the short side leg. Okay, so this is the leg that we're gunning for here. Um, you know, normally if I stand in my guard here, right, the she I have really good protection on the left side of my body, right? That's my head and my leg is protected with, with minimal uh, movement. I can bring this corner over to protect this side of my head here. I also have my short up here to protect the right side of my head. Uh, the only thing that's really protecting my leg and my hip back here is the fact that it's further back. Okay, so as I stand over here, you can see that my leg and my hip being further back is what is protecting uh, is, is, is what's protecting this quadrant down here, okay? Um, if I step forward, right? So if I step forward, I have to be aware that this tip has to move over to now protect that leg, okay? So a lot of times if I'm moving forward, what I'll do is I'll use the gathering steps, right? Or the fencing steps, where I'm really not bringing this leg forward. However, sometimes I wanna really go after somebody if I wanna chase somebody down, right? In order to cover more ground, I have to bring this leg forward, and what you'll see is that as I step forward, that tip comes over to protect that leg, then it goes back, right? So as I move, that, that tip moves back and forth, right? So that corner is covering that leg. So what happens is that um, the more steps somebody takes, the more chance that they're going to get sloppy. Uh, and there's two ways that people will get sloppy. They'll either not bring that tip over when they move, or what they'll do is they'll take a bigger step. So even if I bring this forward, but like I get my leg way out there, right? Um, you know, that will also open me up to, to getting hit there. Um, so usually with the first step people take, they're a little bit more cautious. By the second step, they get a little bit more sloppy. By the third step, they get very sloppy. So the goal here is to try and get somebody to pursue you uh, so that you can, you know, expose this quadrant that's normally further back and you can't hit it otherwise, okay? So let me, um, I'm going to go to a, uh, to a buckler now just because you guys will be able to see a little bit more. Okay, so with the... The buckler and the cut and thrust sword, right? I'm matching up against the full size shield here, which hey, sometimes happens. Um, and uh, what I want to do is again, like I said, I'm as I'm here, I'm baiting this guy from the edge of my range, right? I don't expect any of these shots to, to actually land. I'm just trying to get this guy to really come after me. Um, so, so as I'm baiting him, I'm moving back, okay? Baiting him, okay? So again, I'm just you know, I'm just trying to probe him, get him to chase me. If he starts pursuing me, like I said, uh, the first, you know, at some point, usually by the second or third step, that leg is going to start coming forward, and that's when I'm going to attack it with a middle hop. Okay, so with this type of a sword, which is, uh, a, you know, it's, it's, it's a fairly light sword, not, you know, I mean, the, the weight distribution is such that the tip moves really fast. So if I can get this guy to pursue me, boom, there's that, there's that cut that I'm taking. Now, what I'm doing is this shield has... A curve over here right that that curve um, allows the shield holder uh, certain options here let me demonstrate so this curve over here right it allows me to bring that sword nice and low and get it in deep you know um, and, and get certain angles that I would not be able to get otherwise um, if this I say was a square uh, you know was a square shaped shield Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of this person's curve and attack inside that curve. So from here, I'm going to basically attack there, right? I'm, I'm, I'm using, I'm utilizing that curve because if I try to attack up here, I'm probably going to just hit the edge over there. Um, let me go back to the buckler. So with this type of a sword, the cut and thrust sword, which is moves pretty quickly i'm just going to basically punch this out and attack attack that quadrant and then from there right because now i've got their attention down there i'm going to immediately attack somewhere else right so there and then boom okay so maybe that strike will land maybe it won't land you know my my end goal was that up there anyway or on that leg over there so i'm, I'm kind of using this as a distraction 
to attack somewhere else, right? Um, so, so that's how I'm using, utilizing this. With again, with this type of a sword, I'm just punching it out. Okay, it's a light enough sword that I can punch it out, and then easily, you know, I can punch it out, easily rotate it over. Okay. Now, by the way, with all these cuts, um, I'm extending my arm, you know, the, the buckler or the shield, whatever I'm using, to cover my arm. If at some point I get a little bit sloppy, you know, assume that I did extend, okay? Because that's not the focus of this video. The, the focus of this video is, is the middle how to the short side leg. Uh, so in all these shots, I'm basically covering my arm and then throwing that cut over there, okay? Now, if I switch to a heavier sword, right? Let me switch up a little bit. So this is an earlier, you know, whatever, 10th, 11th, 12th century sword. Uh, the weight distribution is a little bit different on this because this is a heavier sword I have to put more hip into my shot so you know I have to use a little bit more hip you know a little bit more hip um, so if I'm going to throw this shot again I have to throw hip into the shot right so here you see how I'm throwing hip it's the same thing that way that way um, it's a question of going up or down but it's the same thing the hip is moving the same way so as I throw this, okay, so again, as I'm here, throw it there, and then cut there, okay? So, hip it, boom. Hip it, boom, okay? The other option is, because here I'm, I'm rotating it around, I can also pull through, okay? So I can throw that shot, come in, and, you know, basically just as I throw it, pull it back, you know, pull it through, and then throw the sword to the other side. Um, do it again okay it, it doesn't matter if it catches the shield edge you know um you know it, again it's a distraction shot it, if they don't move that shield over it can hit uh it can hit quite hard uh, i'm gonna throw it with a little bit more force into the wood there you can see how that that bit into the wood this is not a super sharp sword okay you know and this is not you know uh medieval swords were not razors because you know this also has to hit you know other things other weapons besides people um it has to hit armor and not chip and break so even without a super so sharp sword you can see how it it bites into the wood okay um you know just because of it's a sword okay um so i'm going to also demonstrate this now with a different sword it's a typical uh 10th century type x sword um so this, you know, again, with a, with a sword like this, you know, maybe what I'll do is I, I got to use hip, but I can also use gravity. I can take a, a high guard, right, take a high vantag guard, right, and use gravity to make me, help me make the cut, okay? Okay, okay let me uh, get a full-size shield. Right, you can see how it's biting into the wood over here. All right, so with here now I have, with this type of a shield, I have to make sure I clear my shield, right? Keeping my head, my hand rather behind the, you know, behind the, uh, the shield as I throw the shot. Okay. Now I can also do this in reverse. I can throw a high shot, a high dwarf how or a high middle how, whatever you want to call it, um, to that side, and then come down over here. So that will work just as well. Um, so it accomplishes the same goal. We're attacking this area. It gives our opponent something else to think about. They also now have to think about protecting that leg. They have to think about pursuing us, right? They, they know that, hey, if they just charge at us, we're going to take that leg. So, um, you know, it can it'll also slow them down a little bit if they know that you're going to be going after that leg, they have to move forward a little bit more cautiously. Um, a lot of people, uh, they don't throw this shot because especially with a larger shield, you cannot see that target. So I have to basically know that that target is going to be there without looking at it. So especially with a shield like this, I can't, I can't see that quadrant. Uh, you know, I can see up here, I can see over here. I cannot see that quadrant, okay? So you have to... You have to throw that shot without seeing it. Okay, so that's that's one of the reasons why a lot of times people won't attack that quadrant with a larger shield, even with a, a, a larger buckler. So let's say with let's say a buckler like this. Okay, with this buckler, 
it kind of, you know, if I'm holding this out, it covers up that target area. I can't see that, I can't see where it's making contact right now. So I have to kind of throw into it, you know. So that's, a, that's another reason why you may not hit it, but it doesn't matter. It will still have the desired effect of maybe it'll hit, or maybe it'll get that, that shield to move over. And again, if the shield moves over, the shield moves over this way, right? It's gonna open up something on that side over there. Boom, okay. So um, again, just, just to finish off with the power generation, with a light cut and thrust, cut and thrust sword like this, you know, I could just punch my arm out just because it's such a light sword, right? So with this type of a sword, it's really easy. With the heavier sword, okay, um, if I'm going to throw this shot, I have to rely on, you know, I have to rely on um, on my hip, or I have to rely on gravity to throw this shot, okay? So I have to use, you know, and I have to use a more, more of a rotation uh, in order to flip it from one side to the other. Um, now, if I do the pull through, because if I do the rotation, let's say I throw that shot, right? From here, if I don't pull through, I pretty much committed to going to that side, okay? If I pull through, I can come back and hit the same side. So if I if I attack there, pull through, I can now attack the same, you know, I can attack the short side. Um, so so pulling through, even though it's a little bit sh uh, slower, it does change the tempo. It gives you the option of attacking again at the same side. You can even attack the leg twice, you know, so I can go there, pull through, I can, even, you know, just attack that leg again over there. Um, so, so... So being, you know, pull, you know, practicing pulling through gives you options as well, and then you can use the rotation to just go to the other side. So a couple of things for you guys to think about. Um, uh, you know, a lot of times in the uh, fighting manuals, you know, you'll see. Let me go back to the short book, small book. You know, we see a lot of a lot of this, all right. Um, and a lot of times when I'm sparring people. You know, with a sword and a buckle like this, I'll see them start off with this guard. Now, it, I, and I did a pre prior video on this. I think that part of the reason why the manuals tend to focus on this guard is because a lot of times people are just drawing out of the the sheath or the scabbard. So if you're coming out of your scabbard, you know, yeah, it makes sense that that's going to be your first shot. Um, but it does somewhat limit you to attacking. You know, it, it limits your angles of attack. All right. So from here, you're going to go there, or you can go there. Um, whereas from a guard over here, right, if you can get to this guard, now I can, you know, it, it's pretty easy to attack the three quadrants. You know, I can attack there, I can attack there, I can attack there. And now with this middle how to the leg, to the, to the short side leg, we also have the option of attacking, attacking over there as well. So I, I think this is definitely something that, um, you know, you, you want to have in your toolbox, okay? So if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it. If you're not a member of the channel, please subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.